Good morning, day eight of our journey through Jeremiah, chapters 22 to 24. Today we see uh, Jeremiah prophesying against two of his chief antagonists at at the time of his ministry. Uh, The first one being the king and the royal court. And uh, during uh, Jeremiah's prophecy, he, he began at the time of King Josiah, who was a righteous king. But from the time of Josiah onwards, uh, there were three of his sons reigned and one of his grandsons. And all four of those men were exceedingly corrupt and wicked. And um, to the detriment of the people that they ruled over, the people of Judah, they enriched themselves. This is the sort of height of corrupt Uh, political leadership and not only that but they also led the people astray in their spiritual or religious life and they had a willing ally in the form of a group of false prophets and these false prophets were running around telling the people um, everything's going to be fine God is with us Uh, there's going to be peace all our days ignore Jeremiah with all of his doom and gloom he's a liar everything's going to be fine so you've got these two groups the corrupt politicians and the false prophets and those two groups feature prominently in the prophecy of Jeremiah and we see both of them in today's readings chapters 22 to 24 and then in the middle of it there is this prophecy Uh, of a coming king who will take the throne instead of these other kings who are all corrupt, who will bring righteousness to the earth. Okay, so let's just read some of the words that Jeremiah predicts against these uh, these kings, these sons of, of Josiah. At the beginning of chapter 22, God says to Jeremiah, Go down to the house of the king of Judah, and there speak this word. And then he has this prophecy. He says, Go down to the king's house, and I'll, I'll organize that the security guard lets you in at the front door. And then when you get into the court of the king, I want you to look him in the eyes, and I want you to tell him what's going to happen to him if he doesn't repent. And then I want you to look, at around, look around at the gravy train of all the people in his court, and I want you to address them as well. <laughs> Jeremiah, this guy had a difficult job. And these were some of the words that he says to the king. Uh, Thus says the Lord, Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness. And let every corrupt politician today hear those words. And his chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service without wages and gives him nothing for his work who says, I will build myself a wide house with spacious chambers and cut out windows for it, paneling it with cedar and painting it with vermilion. Shall you reign because you enclose yourself in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Your father Josiah was a righteous man. And you know that, says Jeremiah to Josiah's son. Then it was well with him. It was well with your father Josiah, because he did righteousness. He judged the cause of the poor and the needy. Then it was well. Was not this knowing me, says the Lord. The reason he ruled righteously was because he knew me. He served me. Yet your eyes and your heart are for nothing but covetousness, for shedding innocent blood and practicing oppression and violence. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, master, or alas, his glory. He shall be buried with the burial of a donkey, dragged and cast out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Wow. Can you imagine? Walking into a king's palace, going into a president's house today and saying, your dad knew the Lord and that's why he reigned righteously. But you, you are a wicked man and you reign through oppression and violence and you're not even going to be buried. You're going to be dragged outside the the walls of this city like a like a dead donkey. That's what God says to you. 
I mean, this guy's ministry. Anyway, so he gets to this point where he is now decrying the corrupt politicians. And then later in, in chapter 24, he, he starts to address those false prophets. But in the middle of all this, he says these words. This is the beginning of chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. So why was God so angry with these kings who, who were corrupt and selfish? Because the, the kings of, of Israel and Judah, who were to sit, particularly the kings of Judah, who were to sit on David's throne, th their primary call from God was not to be a king in the sense of all the other nations. No, the king of God's kingdom was to be a shepherd. That was the call on the king. He was to be unselfish, to live his life for the sake of the people that he led. He was to protect them and provide for them and guard them and fight their battles for them and live his life in service to them as a shepherd gives his life for the sheep. This is the analogy that God uses for a righteous king. He is to be a shepherd. And he says to these corrupt kings, you are shepherds who destroy and scatter my sheep. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away and not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doings, says the Lord. But I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. So here's this, this prophecy again of a remnant that is going to be preserved through this destruction that's going to come to the kingdom. And God is going to bring this remnant back to the land. And then he's going to give them a king who will be a true shepherd to them. And this now is the prophecy that is made. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness, a king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now, it's almost like here's a mystery. This is his name by which he will be called. Now, now this is interesting. There's going to come a king who is born into the family of David who will sit on the throne of David. He will be king over God's people in fulfillment of the covenant that God made with David those many years before, that your sons will always sit on the throne of my kingdom. There's going to come this, this king once the remnant has returned and he's going to sit on the throne of David and, and, and this will be his name. What, what will his name be? Yahweh. Tzidkenu is the Hebrew, which means Yahweh, our righteousness. There's going to come a, a king, a human born king who will sit on David's throne, who will rule over the kingdom of God's people. And yet he will be Yahweh. And he will be Yahweh, our righteousness that Yahweh himself the God of the Hebrews himself will come in human form and he will sit on the throne of David and he will bring righteousness to God's people what a phenomenal prophecy of the coming Messiah that when Jesus Christ was born into the world he was born into the family of David and he was born to be the king of Israel. And uh, while I could go on about how his kingdom comes, what I want you to notice this morning is that Jesus as your king 
does the four things that the kings of Israel and Judah were not doing for their people and for which God rebuked them. God said that he would set a shepherd over them who would feed them. Your shepherd Jesus will feed you. He will give you everything you need. Give us this day our daily bread. We are allowed to pray that. Maybe you are one of those who just lives on the bread line. You're just forever running out of money. And, and I want to ask you, have you ever gone without what you needed? Your shepherd will always give you what you need. Seek him. Pray for what you need and believe. And there will never be a day where he is not faithful to feed you. He will feed you. They shall fear no more. Put your trust in God. What is the thing you fear? Perfect love drives out all fear. Take your requests to Jesus. Pour out your heart to him. Tell him, this is what I fear. This is what I'm facing, Lord. He will strengthen your heart. If Jesus is your shepherd, you need not fear. Nor be dismayed. Is there any situation in your life which leaves you completely without energy, without hope, without any sense of, 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 of knowledge or encouragement that, that you just feel completely dismayed by something that's happened? You don't know what to do. You feel like you're completely defeated. If Jesus is your shepherd, he will lead you in triumph and you will see your way through even the most difficult and darkest time. He will see you through. This too shall pass. If God is for you, who can be against you? In this world you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. You put your eyes on Jesus and you pour your heart out to, to him again this morning and you will not completely lose hope. He will get you through because he's a good shepherd. And lastly, they shall, uh, they shall not lack, neither shall they be lacking. A good shepherd makes sure that goodness and mercy follows his sheep. Do you lack any good thing? Seek God. You have not because you ask not. And sometimes you ask with the wrong motives and so God won't give it to you. But if you're lacking anything that you need, you bring that request to Jesus, your shepherd, and he will provide for you. So praise God for the king of Israel who now sits on the throne of David, who is our good shepherd. And I'll see you tomorrow.